Hello in game fans, for as awesome as Metroidvanias are, you may eventually get sick of backtracking and just want something a little more linear, and with Cyber Shadow kicking all sorts of butt, I want to showcase some of the best modern examples, most of which are delightfully nostalgic, bringing me back to a simpler time and I hope they will for you as well. This list will exclude puzzle platformers, precision platformers and run and gun titles, the last of which you can find in my video up there, but without further ado, let's get into this list. While I do primarily cover indie games here, I do think that there are some standout examples that are kind of adjacent and deserve a mention, with of course Sonic Mania being the example here. I think that the story of how this game came to be is amazing, where a group of developers from the Sonic fan game and ROM hack community were actually approached by Sega and were allowed to make this title, and my god, did they nail the look and feel of this game. Sonic goes way back to the Sega Genesis, where he was their platform mascot, and while the series did struggle with the transition to 3D and the modern era, Sonic Mania is nothing short of fantastic. If you youngins never understood a generation's fascination with Sonic, I would implore you to give this a go since the speed of this is something else, where in the words of Sonic, you gotta go fast. There are some old school sensibilities with the design, captured nicely here for better or worse, but still a feat worth of commendation. One of the standout hits from developer Spooky Squid Games is They Bleed Pixels, a pixel art combat and combo focused title with a cool look. As I've noted before, the white outlines of everything does help to make a game stand out, where you play as a girl sent to an academy for troubled young ladies who slowly finds herself losing control and transforming into the purple skin and clawed demonic version of herself, having to battle through her nightmares to destroy a cursed book at the centre of it all. The more efficiently and ruthlessly you dispatch of enemies, the quicker your checkpoint meter fills which allows you to place your own checkpoints and keeps the action moving. Good feeling action and it's not to be missed. I absolutely love the retro look of Cursed Castilla, Maldita Castilla EX, of course paying tribute to ghosts and goblins, but this comes to us from a developer in Spain, incorporating some elements of mythology from that country and Europe instead of the more amorphous gothic inspiration. The original was actually released in 2012, with the version on Steam being extended with more content, but it's an old school arcade action platformer that's of interest. Playing as a brief knight appointed by the king, travel the cursed lands, banishing creatures and closing the gateway to hell that brought all of these into the mortal plane in the first place. Very classic in design, almost to a fault, but as someone who has an appreciation for video game history, this gets a spot. Mm -hmm. 
Speaking of Sonic-like titles, from the look, movement, speed and design of Spark the Electric Jester, I think that the inspiration is clear as day, and I do believe that this developer did also work on some Sonic fan games so it's no surprise here. People have described this as a mix between Sonic, Kirby and Mega Man X so you know what to expect, but for a fan game-ish thing being this good, it certainly warrants a mention. Also of note is that there is a sequel to this, which is a 3D platformer, following a similar route that many franchises have taken, although personally, I do lean towards this 2D entry. I want to thank you folks for pointing me towards the dishwasher Vampire Smile, since I did enjoy developer Scar Studios Souls like entry Salt and Sanctuary, and going back to their earlier titles was a delight. This game takes out the Souls part and is just a straightforward action platformer that feels good, encouraging combos and stylish action, although in the vein of titles like Devil May Cry, it's a little on the gory and bloody end of things. Still, a title that I don't see enough people talking about so do pick this up if you have not. I do have to give props to developer Inti Create for being a bigger company that is still making 8-bit titles in the modern age, with Bloodstained Curse of the Moon in 2018 and its sequel released last year. Sure, these are 8-bit companion titles to a more substantial Egavania title, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, starring some of the same characters and having 8-bit representations of bosses from that game, but for what it's trying to do, a classic Vania title, it certainly hits the spot. The ability to instantaneously switch between characters during the level is interesting, allowing you to access new paths and secrets, but since I do love the Metroidvania entry, this was a no-brainer. Moe Astray from 2019 was a title that I liked since it does have gorgeous art, but more than that, it does have some great world building as well. You play as a slime blob creature thing that awakens in an abandoned laboratory only to find that the humans in the world have disappeared or have been overtaken by some sort of virus Last of Us style. And figuring out what happened through the memories of the characters that you take over and control is one of the highlights. Interesting control scheme as well, so certainly one of interest. If you love a challenge, you're in for a treat. Wings of V is one of the tougher entries in the genre, combining precision platforming and challenging boss fights all with an excellent pixel art style. You're playing as an angel who has to defeat the recently freed Demon Lord, having to battle through the demonic hordes in order to do so. It ranks on the meso core end of things, really making things tough even on the easier difficulties, but the jumping and platforming sections in particular are great if going a little in the I wanna be the bushi school of design but not unfairly so, making this one for fans of the genre.
I've mentioned Bladed Fury in my video covering 2D brawlers and beat'em ups, but I do think that it's still worth a mention once again since it's a gorgeous hand-drawn title using Chinese mythology, setting and art style. Playing as a young princess, seeking revenge against a traitor that killed her father, battle your way through soldiers and demons alike on your quest for vengeance. The art style has to be the highlight, which, combined with the sleek animations and great feeling combo-based action, and you got a winner. I was and still am very impressed with The Eternal Castle Remastered from 2019, the fake remaster of a game supposedly from 1987, but lo and behold, there was never such a game. However, it does use a 2-bit CGA visual style, which, in accordance to the technology of the time, is pixel graphics at its finest, with an intriguing world to explore after you crash land on this planet. There's bits of sci-fi, cyberpunk, the occult, the arcane, aliens, the post-apocalypse and more in this, meshing together genres and inspirations, all wrapped up with one of the most bold art directions that I have seen in modern games. Sure, it's a little bit more on the cinematic platformer end of things, but it's a very interesting indie game which I love. The most recent entry on this list is Sakuna of Rise and Ruin, where you play as a young, spoiled harvest goddess sent to an island to help the townspeople take back the land from demons and monsters. It's one of the most authentic Japanese themes in such a game, where one of the central mechanics is the importance of rice to their people, with rice is power popping up in the trailers. The action and combat feels great, although it does use the more modern 2.5D look, which I'm not really a fan of, but this is blended together with a rice growing and cooking system which rounds off the package. A level-based entry which is incorrectly tagged as a roguelite on Steam is Hell as Other Demons, drawing me in with what else than the pixel art. However, what I did find was some of the best action in games, with a number of optional challenges like not using guns in a game all about shooting that kept things fresh. If you enjoy titles like Super Creek Box, this may be of interest to you. Before the arrival of Sonic Mania, Sonic fans were lamenting a lack of a great Sonic game, so a title that out Sonic Sonic was Freedom Planet from 2014. There's a unique three character setup where each does have variants on the main story campaign, but it absolutely nails that 90s era mascot platformer, and like the blue blur, has a preference for speed. I do love the look of this game, and the combat itself is not too bad either, but the characters do actually have some variety in attacks. The story is okay as well, not super memorable but functional, but the sheer variety and the amount of content in this is pretty neat. The purple coloured character Lilac has also appeared in a number of indie game crossovers like Indie Pogo, and the best part is that there is a sequel in the works, so we do have more awesome action to look forward to. The no-brainer entry for this list is Katana Zero, a stylish action title from 2019 that impressed me and many others with the pixel art. Being published by Devolver Digital, there is of course a little bit of a Hotline Miami vibe, but instead of guns, you're an awesome swordsman who can not only slice and deflect bullets, but does also have a time rewind mechanic built in. Interestingly, the way that this game tells its story is one of the most impressive parts told through flashbacks and therapy of all things, adding another layer to this fantastic game.
billing of course goes to Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, the little indie darling that could and has somehow spawned a massive empire in its wake. To think that this game was originally kickstarted in 2013, raising a respectable amount of 300,000 US dollars, which was about four times their initial goal, but what has occurred since then is nothing short of magical. For the first campaign, simply titled Shovel Knight at the time, but later retroactively being renamed Shovel of Hope, was excellent in its own right. The stretch goals of the campaign did get the developer to make three more campaigns for Plague, Spectre and King Knight, which were finally complete in 2019, being packaged together as the treasure trove, and all campaigns were released for free to existing owners as well. They did also throw in the Smash Bros-like multiplayer title, Shovel Knight Showdown, so you cannot really beat value for money with this package. The obvious parallel would be Mega Man, having the Knight suffix replace Man from those games, where the action feels great and there's just so much variety in levels and environments. Shovel Knight has gone on to become a bona fide indie classic, with there being spin off titles in the works, guest starring in a wide variety of games, and even getting its own amiibo. Truly an inspirational story for creators from all walks of life, it takes the number one spot. For a look at upcoming action platformers, do click on the video up there, and I will see you after the jump.